Hundreds of years ago, as the British Empire's sun slowly began to rise over the Indian horizon, British ships used to sail to India to trade in spices and textiles. Having realized the immense potential of India, the emphasis gradually shifted from trade to political dominion until India attained its independence. Now, 47 years later, in the context of the new world order, the wheel has come full circle, with both India and Britain vigorously boosting their trade links and assuring each other political support. While both these partners in history have been having a pleasant relationship, it is only recently, over the past one year, that Indo-British relations have set off at a galloping pace. This change was caused when both the countries realized that a healthy symbiotic relationship was an essential ingredient to their own well-being. The start-off point this time was trade again, with the British Prime Minister John Major planting the sapling of the Indo-British Partnership Initiative in January 1993. The IBPI, represented by the barons of industry from both the countries, set forth for itself a very clear task, to facilitate collaborative business between India and Britain. That initiative marked a departure in the sense that it marked a shift in emphasis in relations between India and Britain, a formal acknowledgement of a shift in emphasis from trade to investment. The future, it said that the future relationship between India and Britain is going to be where they are going to be wanting to invest in India and they would like us, if possible, in, and there are companies which can do it, to invest back in Britain. The preliminaries for this exercise commenced in the form of seminars, joint discussions and tea parties. But it was only nine months later that the fruits of this exercise became visible when the HMI Britannia, the personal luxury yacht of Her Majesty, the Queen of England, sailed into the Mazagan docks of Bombay on a unique mission of trade and diplomacy. It was on the decks of this beautiful yacht that the creme de la creme of Indian and British businessmen signed deals worth £1.2 billion in the wake of India's new investor-friendly economic liberalisation programme. Today, the total investment figure has gone over £2 billion. Trade between the two countries is up by over 20% in dollar terms and Indian exports to the UK crossed the $1 billion benchmark for the first time. This new positive spirit was further boosted by Prime Minister Narasimha Rao's visit to the UK last week. Speaking with courage, conviction and a confidence that reflects India's growing status as an economic tiger, the Prime Minister was emphatic in assuring British officials and businessmen that there was no turning back on reforms. And that this was no mere promise was amply demonstrated when to meet a long-time demand of overseas investors, India and Britain signed a 10-year investment guarantee pact ensuring compensation for losses from war and civil disturbances. And in another significant area of economic cooperation, three British companies signed a memorandum of understanding with two Indian private sector companies for investments in infrastructural areas such as power and telecom. There were also hectic discussions between the two sides over British Aerospace's proposal to sell its advanced jet trainer aircraft, the Hawk 100, to meet the requirements of the Indian Air Force. However, it is not just economic relations that are currently receiving a boost between the countries. There has been a marked improvement in the political and diplomatic atmosphere too. Starting off with the extradition treaty signed in late 1992, which proved to be of great help to India to deal with Khalistani terrorists seeking refuge in Britain, both countries have been inching towards a more harmonious relationship. One area where both sides now see eye to eye is the controversial issue of Kashmir. Last week, Prime Minister John Major assured Britain's support to India on the subject, stating that he was all for a bilateral solution and against the internationalizing of the issue. Prime Minister Rao, on his behalf, has said that India would study positively the three-point British proposal on Kashmir, which calls for resumption of political process in the state, Indo-Pak talks and stoppage of trans-border help to militants. They have signed an agreement with us, an extradition treaty for uh, dealing with terrorists who commit acts of terror and then escape into England. Uh, they are involved with uh, further legislation on the basis of this agreement to ensure that such groups or such persons who are involved in terrorism uh, do not get a financial or property base in England. However, one issue which continues to remain a bone of contention between the two countries is that of nuclear non-proliferation. 
In a meeting with Liberal Democrat leader Paddy Ashdown, the Indian Prime Minister took a firm stand, saying that India's acceptance of the NPT will depend on whether China and Russia are also included in the treaty. But experts see this hitch only as a minor one and are of the opinion that it is only a matter of time before even this block is removed from the path which India and Britain have jointly promised to pursue. A new path by which both countries progress being equal partners in trade and diplomacy.